Hey guys, hi and welcome to the video. This video is gonna be really, really interesting because we are gonna deploy our Flask REST API on AWS Docker container, that is something but ECS. And then we're gonna create our service, our task, and then not only that, we are also gonna attach a domain name, which means when somebody goes to www.somilchar.com or whatever domain that you have, you will see a beautiful Swagger UI. So something like this, as you can see, uh, somilchar.com slash Swagger UI, and people can uh, you know come here and they can test things out through the Swagger UI. So they can come here, they can try the API, and it works fine, right? So we're gonna learn about all of these and. All right, let's get started guys. I'm excited. So the entire source code be source code could be found in my GitHub section. So don't worry about that. Let's see how I've laid, laid my project here. So I have an app directory where I have essentially my app.py and my API folder where I have all my API. And you can see I have a simple route called views.py, right? This is how I've organized my app. Uh, then I have a code coverage. I have my env files, I have my requirements and my unit test file. All right, then on the top of that, I have my Docker compose file and my release.docker file and test.docker file. So these are all the Docker file that, that, that uh, we need essentially. And remember all these source code are there so you can go and check that out. In the unit test, as you can see, I have a very simple unit test that, that essentially makes sure that you know, uh, the API passes the test, right? So I have a simple unit test here, right? Um, then essentially after that, in my app.py, I have a routes here, as you can see here. Now let's verify all these things, whether it's working or not. The, the way we would do that is first of all, before going to the ECS, you wanna make sure that everything works fine. So say docker compose up, tag tag build in your, uh, in your current directory. And once it is done, it will essentially uh, start the docker container in your current working directory. Then we'll go, go to uh, essentially localhost 8080 and we should see the swagger UI. So I'm gonna go that. and then I'm gonna say Swagger UI. So let's wait for this to complete and then I'll show you the Swagger UI and then we shall deploy things on AWS. So as you can see, now if I go back to the UI, I should have my beautiful Flask backend, right? Now, the next step is now let's deploy things to it. All right, the next step is to create a repository. So I'm on my uh, ECS and I'm on the uh, repository section. Now let's create, click on uh, repository. and. I'm gonna I'm gonna name this as backend as you can see here this is pi uh, private and then I'm gonna click on create repository once that is done I should have the push command here so before that what we will do is we are gonna type the command AWS configure on the CLI so it's clearing up so I'm gonna say AWS configure and then put your access and secret key don't worry I'm gonna delete this after the video so not to worry I have done that I have put the region to US to US uh, US East 2 and I've done that right after that I'm gonna push the first command so if I come here to my console this should authenticate um, that right so hopefully I should get a succeeded message on my console so let's wait all right that's done now it's very easy uh, if you go here uh, we have command to build and, and essentially push the image so uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, I already have things in my notepad so you know I could uh, speed up the process so I have copied this uh, command, right? So I'm gonna first of all tag my image and then I'm gonna push to the repository. So now uh, it's being pushed. Once that is done, now the next steps are essentially creating a service and a task which I'm... So the image has been pushed as you can see very easy right now. The next step is essentially to create a cluster, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over to ECS, right? So I'm gonna head over to the ECS and then I'm gonna create my first cluster. So now I'm gonna click on cluster, right? And then I'm gonna click on create, click on EC2 and Linux because that's what I wanna do. And then I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna call this as my backend cluster. I'll leave everything to default. I am gonna change one thing, that is the instance type. I'm gonna use T2 micro because that is essentially free uh, on my free tire account, right? So I'm gonna select T2 micro, right? head over down and click on create. Now, once the cluster is created, we're gonna create a server. All right guys, my cluster is up and ready and now I'm gonna click on task definitions. I'm gonna click on the button, I'm gonna click on EC2, I'm gonna click on next steps and here I'll give my task definitions. I'll say, I'll call this backend APIs, whatever you wanna call, right? Uh, then uh, this one will leave it to default. 
networking as well leave it to default everything should be default and here in the memory you can put whatever you want but i'm just gonna put 256 and 128 uh, 256 and then after that i'm gonna click on add container should open up a sidebar hopefully yep there you go now we'll call this flask api container right and then in the image URI we're gonna click come here copy copy this URI and just paste that in uh, over here this is important because our uh, app was listening on port 8080 so we're gonna say map 80 to port 8080 right so that is important right and then we're gonna click on add and finally we're gonna click on create once our task definition is created we're gonna click on uh, creating a service All right, so now let's create a service. So I'm on my task definition and it says active. So I'm gonna click here and then I'm gonna click on that, that one. And then I'm gonna, from the drop down, I'm gonna say create service. Very easy, right? AWS makes things easy. I'm gonna use an EC2 instance to do that. And my service name will be hmm, last API service. Uh, we'll do one replicas, right? And then I'll leave everything else to default and then I'm gonna click on next steps. Uh, looks good, I click on next steps. Uh, perfect, and then next, and then cl click on create service. So now our service has been created. Now let's wait for it to complete and then we can actually access our API. All right, looks great guys, right? So now I'm on my cluster again. I'm clicking on my cluster, service is active, task is great. Now let's test this out, right? So let's head over to the ECS instance and over here you will see um, ECS instance you want to click on that so what that's going to do it's going to open up EC2 dashboard now from that EC2 dashboard we are going to copy the IP address of the machine so as you can see here uh, we'll copy we'll click here and then I should have my public IP uh, again this is not going to work and the reason it's not going to work is because we have to um, set up an inbound traffic so I will do that shortly so that option should be in the security section uh, no, 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 no. and then I should click on this group right here and then now what I want to do is I want to essentially you know uh, open up a port so I could communicate right I think I've already done that but I'm not sure oh yeah so I'm, I'm gonna click on manage oh, not this one I'm gonna click on manage inbound rules I'm gonna add a rule I'm gonna say all traffic for now and then i'm gonna say my ip address just want to do for my ip address and then i'm gonna click on save so that's done now you can access your uh, api so now copy your public ip address now we'll head over to postman to test things out uh, what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put this one here and there you go congratulations now we'll try to access the swagger ui through this ip address and make sure that works so now instead of localhost uh, i messed up right so what i want to do the url is uh, messed up and it's port 80 remember that uh, gotta remove all these stuff oops 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 you know what i'm gonna do ec gonna copy paste it here and then just gonna uh, remove this and then say swagger UI that should be it and here you can see we have a beautiful swagger UI now the next part is what guess what it is essentially wrong. all right so now we just need to attach our domain name and we are all set so it's pretty easy I already have a registered domain I have tutorials in the past where I've taught this so uh, I've already purchased a domain for $12 on Amazon, right? So now I'm gonna click here and then I'm gonna say click on record. I'm gonna do simple routing and I'm gonna define an A-type routing, right? So whenever anybody goes to saumilchat.com, I wanna route that traffic to a IP address over here and then I'm gonna provide the IP address from the, uh, from the EC2. So I'm gonna copy this, uh, let's copy route 53 paste come here select the check mark click, click on create record at this point everything is done very beautifully and now if I go back to my domain uh, so I'll just replace this by my domain that is Saumilsha I think uh, if everything and there you go guys beautiful look at this guys we have a swagger UI we have our 
uh, API in our um, uh, Docker container, and then we have a custom domain name. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and the source code is there in the GitHub section. So check that out. Try to pause the video and do things uh, because that's the best way to learn. If you have any more questions, let me know your question in the comment section below because the next video is going to be even more interesting because we are going to do a multi-AZ architecture with the Docker containers, which means we're going to have Route 53. We're going to have our API essentially in region one, region two, we'll have ALB. ALB is pointing to our containers. It's going to automatically scale stuff. So all that is coming up in next video, but basics should be, uh, basic should be clear, right? All right. Thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling, keep programming, and I would see you guys in the upcoming next video.